Crosswork family. We've come to worship and praise the Lord once more and again. 
The scripture says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, to serve the Lord with gladness, to come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. God, we invite you into this service today and we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would have your perfect way, God. That you would move in a mighty way today, God. Stand strong in each and every one of us, God, that has come to serve you, God, in spirit and in truth. Now, Holy Spirit, come in and have your perfect way. We need you right now. We need you right now, God. Come in and have your way. Stand strong today in the man of God that's going to bring the word of God. And we ask right now that you would touch his family, that you would protect them and keep them, God. We ask right now that you would touch the Crosswork family, God, each and every one of their homes, collectively as well as individually. God, we ask that you would have your way today, God. We thank you right now. We praise you and we magnify your name. So come on in and have your way today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, stand up on your feet, wherever you are, as we worship God. We give back the praise, the glory, and the honor that he is due. Come on, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, lift up your voice and sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing it one more time. Sing hallelujah to our God.
Praise the Lord. Every praise. Every praise. Amen. Amen. Just give God praise right now this Sunday morning. Amen. The third Sunday in September 2020. Give God some praise for all of the grace and the mercy that he gave you over the last week. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for the morning can be found in 2 Samuel chapter 6, 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse 12, verses 12 through 15. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 12 through 15. Get your Bibles because you will need them as usual uh, on Sunday mornings with us. So get your Bibles handy. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. The word of the Lord reads like this. Then King David was told, The Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Now we reach the part of our service where we recognize our visitors. If you're visiting Crosswork for the very first time this morning, please do us the honor and the privilege and the privilege of appreciating your presence by typing your name in the comments section there on Facebook, or you can send me an email at pastorjohnfm at gmail.com. Now, when you type your name in the comments section on Facebook, the members of Crosswork will begin immediately responding to you and letting you know how happy and privileged we are to have you worshiping with us. We're just a, a place of worship, learning, and fellowship that transforms lives by ministering to the whole person through Jesus Christ. That's a whole lot to say that we are just a church that does ministry. Now, if you were in the sanctuary, if we were all in the sanctuary on Sunday morning, this is the part of the service where we like to greet one another in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Greek word for that is kononia. So in just a second, when the Crosswork song comes on, that's your cue, members of Crosswork, and also our visitors, to just type something in the comments section. Greet one another in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we finish uh, finished the song, we will come back with the announcements, then a ministry uh, of music moment uh, before the uh, sermonic. And then after the sermonic selection, we will hear from God. Amen. Amen. Let us now greet one another in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Here are the announcements for the week. 
Pastor John McCormick would like to thank all leaders who attended the leadership retreat yesterday. Your dedication to take Crosswork to the next level is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Crosswork family, for providing school supplies to students. If you still know of a student, teacher, or family in need of school supplies, please let us know by providing their contact information to the church office via email at admin at crosswork.cc.org. We will be sure to reach out to them. Thank you for showing that Crosswork cares. The Zoom Room is on break for the next two weeks. We will meet again on October 4th for Holy Communion. Please enjoy the rest of your morning. Please join us virtually for Holy Communion immediately after morning worship on October 4th. In preparation, all who want to participate are asked to drive by and pick up their communion elements curbside at the church between 5 and 6 p.m. this Thursday, September 24th. Don't worry, you'll still have time to make Bible study at 6.30. All are asked to wear a mask and gloves when picking up your elements to ensure we are following safety protocols. Please watch your emails and check the website for more instructions. Bible study is back. Join us via Zoom every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. This week, we will cover the fourth installment of the series, When Life Changes, by Elizabeth Lang Thompson. Download the YouVersion Bible app on your smart device and select the plan. Check your email, the website, or Facebook for more details. Spread the word that Sunday morning worship streams live each week on more platforms, including our website at crossworkcc.org, Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and YouTube. Invite your friends and family to tune in live each Sunday, or even better, host a weekly watch party. Save the date. The Southwest Texas Annual Conference of the 10th Episcopal District will be held virtually October 9th through the 10th. This is a chance to see the business meetings of the AME Church without having to travel. Observers may view the meeting on the 10th District website or YouTube channel. More details will follow. The presidential election is November 3rd. We are 44 days away, so make sure you are ready by registering to vote by October 5th. Sign up by texting register to 48683, clicking on the link and filling out the form, or email Sister Victoria Ellison at v underscore ellison2000 at yahoo.com for help registering. Once registered, you can exercise your right to vote by mail or in person as early as October 13th. The deadline to complete your 2020 census is fast approaching. Don't forget to fill out your 2020 census form by September 30th. It takes less than 10 minutes to complete. Our future depends on your participation. Visit my2020census.gov to begin. This concludes the announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly and have a blessed week. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted. Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory.
Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. God, we've reached the preaching moment. We understand that the word can't be preached unless the real preacher comes. Please now come this morning and stand behind this sacred desk and boldly proclaim your word. But before the word is preached, God, we ask that you would prepare our minds and hearts, especially on this morning, to receive your word. Finally, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight for you are my strength and my redeemer in jesus name we pray amen amen if you'll turn in your bibles to second samuel chapter six second samuel chapter six as we said a few minutes ago we'll be reading from verse 12 through verse 15 second samuel chapter six verses 12 through 15 Get your Bibles, call someone, tell them it's time for a word from God. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Reading from the New Living Translation, you will find these words. Then King David was told, the Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. Then King David was told, The Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the, of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. My brothers and sisters, for the next few minutes, I want to preach from the subject, Bring Your Own Fire, a commentary on worship. Bring Your Own Fire, a commentary on worship worship. The inspiration for this sermon this morning came from a telephone conversation that I had with a colleague of mine in the first Episcopal district. Last week, he and I were discussing the challenges of pastoring and preaching in the midst of a pandemic. Dr. Vernon Baird, the Reverend Dr. Vernon Baird Jr. and I were talking about how it is that it's sort of tough on Sunday mornings to have to preach to an empty sanctuary. And from that conversation, we began discussing further, and we have concluded conclusively that every time you come, you've got to bring your own fire. Yes, my brothers and sisters, what this pandemic has taught us, if it hasn't taught us anything else, is that because of where we are, we've got to bring our own fire. Now, that particular edict comes uh, for and applies to the pulpit as well as it does the pews. And yes, I hear somebody saying, Pastor, that's all fine and well, but I'm not in the pews this morning, so how is it applicable here? Hang with me, because if there's one thing COVID-19 has taught us, and that is if we're going to worship, we're going to have to worship virtually, which means we have to worship wherever we are. What that means, my brothers and sisters, is wherever you happen to be right now watching this particular service is your pew. If you are lying in the bed watching this, that's your pew. If you're sitting at the dining room table actually eating breakfast, that's your pew. 
pew. If you're sitting uh, on the couch in front of the television, that's your pew. If you're on the back porch, uh, sitting under your favorite tree on a, next to a table uh, with orange juice, that's your pew. If you are in your bathroom because that's your place of solace, can I suggest that that's your pew? If it's your car, if you happen to be in your car and you are driving or you are parked, that's your pew pew, if you are in your workspace, your office, or your actual cubicle, wherever you are, that is your pew. And so the challenge is, as we try to do uh, the best we can in isolation, the problem and challenge becomes, how do we worship in an isolated place? Can I suggest to you that what this tells us is, is if we really want to experience the presence and the power of God, we've got to bring bring our own fire. Can you hang with me for just a few minutes and let's look at this particular text because I think it will give a wonderful commentary on what it means to bring your own fire. Bible study, Bible scholars understand that this particular text as told uh, in 2 Samuel uh, finds David trying to get the Ark of the Covenant of God into Jerusalem. In fact, he has to go to Obed-Edom's house to get it. Word gets Gets to David that the Lord is blessing uh, Obed Edom's house and Obed Edom because the presence of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, is there. And I know that there are some students of the Bible, and you understand how it is that the Ark of the Covenant actually got to Obed Edom's house. It got there because David and his men were trying to came bring the Ark back to Jerusalem, but there was a problem when a man named Uze reached out to touch the Ark that had been placed on a cart. Yes, I told you, you need to get your Bibles, bring your own Bibles to, to any time you come in to worship because you need to get the full picture. And I can't unfold it for you right here in the few minutes that I have. In fact, what happened was uh, Uze actually touched the box, the, uh, touched the Ark of the Covenant of God, and the word said that God's anger burned on him and he dropped dead. David then understood that there was a problem and he could not get the Ark of the Covenant uh, to Jerusalem where he had planned to get it so he tucked it at Obed-Edom's house. It stayed there for some three months and word got to David that because of the blessings that Obed-Edom and his household was receiving, David needed to go and pick up the ark. You keep reading it, reading it in your leisure and you'll discover that they actually do it right this time because when they tried to transport it the last time they didn't follow the rules. This time they followed the rules. They didn't put the ark on a cart. They put it on poles and the priests carried it. But here it is when we see in our text the priest who were carrying the ark after they had moved about six steps. Uh, they stopped right there and David did two sacrifices. He sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And then the word says that David danced with all his might in his priestly garments. Can I suggest to you that that is a, a perfect tutorial on what it means to bring your own fire? Hang with me for just a few minutes and you'll get it. See, David and his boys are going to get the Ark of the Covenant and they're going to bring it back to or bring it to Jerusalem where David is. But watch this. David understands uh, that because of what happened the last time, uh, they need to make sure they do it right. And so as they are carrying it, as one commentator would say, the reason that they stopped after six steps uh, was because they were grateful uh, that nothing happened to them. David right then and there uh, actually did, a, did two sacrifices. Look at the story over in First Chronicles. This same story will tell you that there were several sacrifices that David gave right there. And can I stop right there? And this is for those of you who are students of the Bible. Understand that when there were sacrifices, those sacrifices were really offerings unto God. And if you look over in Leviticus about the first six chapters, you'll understand the different types of offerings and sacrifices. Just about every last one of them contained an element of fire. 
mm, put your thinking cap on because I'm coming around to my first point in a minute. Notice what the text does not tell us. The text does not tell us that David had to scurry around to find the elements needed to do the sacrifices. The text does not say that the place was already on fire when David got there. No, no, what the text teaches us is that after they took six steps, then they performed the sacrifices. Let me stop right there, park the first point that I need somebody to get on this Sunday morning. If you really want to bring your own fire, you need to understand that you cannot rely on someone else to bring for you what you ought to bring for yourself. Ooh, somebody's going to get that in just a few minutes. Notice David didn't have to ask. He didn't have to go borrow anything. David brought everything he needed to actually perform those sacrifices. What am I trying to tell you? What I want you to understand is the sacrifices in that context, the fire in that context for purposes of preaching this morning is really the attitude of worship. In other words, if you're going to worship, you got to bring your own fire. You can't rely on the praise and worship leader. You can't rely on the pastor to bring the fire for you. You can't rely on the minister of music who's tickling uh, the keys on the keyboard or the piano or the B Hammond B3. No, you need to understand that you need to bring your own fire. You can't rely on folk who are coming to the church so that you can catch fire because they happen to be sitting next to you. No, what this pandemic has taught us is if we're going to engage in worship, we've got to engage in worship right where we are, which means in your pew, your virtual pew right now, you got to bring your own fire. You've got to bring your own worship. Don't rely. You can't rely on anybody else. In fact, you're lying in your bed or sitting at your table or outside or at the dining room table or in the garage or in the bathroom or in your car or in your cubicle or your office and nobody else is there. But can I suggest to you that even though no one else is with you, you can still worship God. Look at the text, my brothers and sisters. I would submit to you that David actually brought two types of fire. There is the physical fire that is inferred in the text. And then there is a figurative fire, a symbolic fire. Where is it, Pastor? I hear you saying it, but I'm trying to find it. Notice in the text that David said after they were, after they committed or after they did the sacrifice, David danced and he danced with fervor. Mm, that's fire, my brothers and sisters. So wherever you are right now, if you really want to bring fire, if you really want to have an authentic worship experience, you stop trying to wait on somebody else to bring what you ought to bring to your for yourself. I'm simply trying to tell you right now, if you want to have a worship experience, you've got to bring your own fire. Something else in the text that the text teaches us. I hear somebody saying, well, pastor, that's all fine and well. You're telling me to bring my own fire, bring what I need to start the fire. You are suggesting that David uh, brought everything he needed to do the fire. But pastor, what is it that I ought to bring to actually start my fire? I'm so glad you asked that point or asked that question because I'm going to submit to you that it's right there in the text. Watch this. Not only must you not rely on somebody else to bring for you what you ought to bring for yourself, but you got to know what to bring in order to build or bring your fire. Here's the first thing you need to build, and it's right there in the text, Latanya, and that is uh, your experience. You see, David, I would submit to you, as he was actually offering the sacrifices uh, and actually engaged in dancing, uh, was bringing his experience uh, with him. Uh, somebody doesn't get it. Can I suggest? Just that maybe David was bringing the experience he started thinking about how God helped him and enabled him to defeat that giant Goliath. Maybe David was thinking about when he was hiding over in the Philistine territory, had no business being there, that's enemy territory, yet God still kept him. Maybe David was thinking about how God willed it such that favor could fall on him and he could become the king of a united kingdom. I don't know what it was, but I'm going to suggest to you that the reason David was able to actually dance was because he was 
bringing his experience. Come here. Let me help you right now. If you really want to know what to bring, let me tell you, you bring your experiences. No matter where you are right now, you've got some experiences. Can I say it like this? No matter where you are right now, you have some times when God did some stuff for you that you could not do for yourself. Hmm, somebody ought to get that. That ought to get you happy right there, Leland. Sometimes you ought to start remembering how God healed you and how God lifted you when nobody else would lift you. I know I'm preaching to somebody in here now. You ought to understand how God navigated your situation where they wanted to turn, they wanted you wanted to turn left, and there was an ambush there, and God made you turn right. Ah, my brothers and sisters, you ought to bring every experience. There's an experience you can bring right now. You are still shut up, isolated during COVID-19. Most of us can't get to the sanctuary, but wherever you are, can I suggest that you can still bring that experience. The fact that we are still alive, the fact that we can breathe, the fact that we are still here when others who have been, who have passed away, that's an experience of God's grace and mercy. Can I ask anybody right now, can you stop right now, press pause, think about what God has done for you, think about how God navigated you, think about how God blessed you, and that's your experience, and that's what you bring to start the fire. But Latanya, there's something else in the text. Not only is must you bring your experience, but here's the part that ought to get us. You ought to bring your enthusiasm. Read the text. When you read the text, Carlos, you discover that David danced, but he danced with fervor. Ah, this wasn't a slow jam like he was trying to just take it easy. No, I think David was thinking about his experiences, and he was not afraid to let everybody else know how thankful he was for his God. Now, if there was anybody who had the pomp and circumstance, if there was anybody who could have been sedity because of his position, it could have been David. But this is the part that I like, Latanya. The fact that David is king, he doesn't let his position, he doesn't let the prestige keep him from praising God. I need somebody in here to understand that I'm going to step on a few toes now, but if you need to bring your own fire, you've got to bring some enthusiasm. That means wherever you are, if you're in your bed and you're down on your dining room table, in the backyard, under your favorite tree, I keep hitting that, in the garage or in your bathroom, you ought to worship God and you ought to do it enthusiastically. I've said this before in some of my sermons, worship is not a time for an intellectual exercise. No, worship is a time for you to move if you can. The fact that you can even move is enough for you to worship God. The fact that you have enough the wherewithal to be able to move whatever limb you want to move, you ought to praise God and worship him. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but you've got to be enthusiastic about that thing. Doesn't matter who's next to you. Doesn't matter if you by yourself. Doesn't matter who else is there in the house with you. I double dog dare you right now to engage in some enthusiastic worship for God. But there's something else in the text. Finally, this is the part that I like to get, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, say this part, and we'll be through. This is part number three, part number three. Watch this. You need to, let's, let's do a review. The first thing is, uh, don't let anybody bring for you what you ought to bring for yourself. That's the first thing. Second thing is, you got to know what to bring, and we've already talked about that. You bring your experiences and your enthusiasm. Ah, here it is. This is the part right here, what I think it happened right here in the text. When David brought his experience, when David brought his experiences, when David brought his enthusiasm, watch this, true, authentic worship took place. Mm, somebody doesn't get it. I don't know where he was, but if I were to use my imagination, Carlos, if I look at the words that are penned here in 2 Samuel and I take them literally, what it tells me is, remember, David, David and his party uh, and his cabinet uh, and his administration went to Obed-Edom's house uh, to bring the ark. That was approximately 10 miles, uh, according to some theologians, uh, from Jerusalem. Uh, now watch this. If we are to deduce uh, that David and his party, his administration, the priests of the church folk, uh, actually got to Obed-Edom's house uh, and picked up the ark of the covenant, uh, the word says that they only took 
six steps. Mm, somebody, somebody's going to get this in a minute. That means if I want to look at this carefully I, and I want to interpret it this way, I, that means that they didn't wait to get to Jerusalem, Latanya, to start the worship. Mm, they actually started the worship right outside. I'm going to get country right here. Obed Edom Nims house. Somebody understands what that means? Uh, Obed Edom Nims. You all know who Nim is. Nims. Uh, all the folk, the family of Obed Edoms, they started uh, actually engaging in worship. Can I suggest here's the part that I'm trying to get you to understand and this really ought to free you up if you want to worship and you want to worship God in spirit and in truth. You ought to offer full, genuine and authentic worship and watch this. This is point number three. Ah, when we engage in authentic worship, watch this. God honors our efforts uh, with his presence. Ooh, somebody doesn't get it. It's right there in the text. You got to read it. You ought to read it symbolically. Watch this. David is engaged in full and genuine authentic worship. Watch this. They, he's bringing the Ark of the Covenant of God. Somebody's know, somebody knows where I'm going. That is, David engaged in worship. He engaged in worship near the Ark of the Covenant of God. Somebody still doesn't get it. In other words, the Ark of the Covenant of God. Come on, Bible students. Uh, represented the presence of God. Ooh, somebody's going to get that. What I'm simply trying to tell you is uh, it doesn't matter where you are. God doesn't give a hill of beans where you are. You can worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, you can worship him genuinely and authentically. And watch this when you do that. Uh, when you give God your best, uh, God will honor your efforts uh, with his presence. Uh, that's what that stuff that, that, uh, that you feel uh, when you start lifting your hands. Uh, that's his presence. Uh, when you start crying crying for no reason at all. That's his presence. When you start saying amen and you're trying to wonder how and why you're saying amen, that's his presence. When you start clapping, that's his presence. When you start singing, that's his presence. When you start running or even laughing, that's his presence. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but you came to this worship service this morning expecting to get engaged in something you thought that you wished that you could worship, but the fact that you were not in the sanctuary actually robbed you of your worship. The devil is a lie. Wherever you are right now, you all you have to do is engage and bring your own fire. I know what I'm talking about. I'm preaching what I'm talking about. You may be wondering, how is it? The pastor, are you all excited? There must be a whole lot of folk in the sanctuary right now. No, I'm preaching to a camera and the crew that put this together so that you could have and we could have this worship experience. Now I bring my own fire every time I stand and I double dog dag anybody. Wherever you are when you engage in worship, don't wait for somebody else. Don't wait for the worship leader. Don't wait for the pastor. Don't wait for the steward. Don't wait for the trustee. Don't wait for the teacher. Don't wait for the minister of music. Don't wait for the choir. No, baby. You start your own party. You bring your own fire. And so ends the lecture and the commentary on worship for the morning. Praise the Lord. I don't know who that particular message was for, but you, you've been finding it hard because it's not the same as if you were in sanctuary that's true it's not but the fact that you're not in a sanctuary should not and will not rob you of an opportunity to engage in authentic worship so next week when it's time for worship Bring your own fire. And watch this. I can't wait till we all have an opportunity to assemble in the sanctuary. But this ought to be a different experience the next time we come, Latanya, because we should be used by now to bringing our own fire. And what would happen in God's house? 
If everybody that showed up when we can show back up, showed up with their own fire. Amen. Now we come to the part of our service where we open the doors of the church. Give those who don't have a relationship with God an opportunity to have that relationship. So if that's you and you're listening by chance and you're feeling something, that's the spirit. You, you, you want to have true and authentic worship, but you need a relationship with God. And the word says that you get that relationship through his son, Jesus. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No person comes to the father except through me. In other words, to get that relationship, you got to come through Jesus. So if you're listening and you want that relationship, you want it, you want it. Wherever you are, I'm going to ask you to repeat a prayer. The prayer that I'm going to pray, pray, you repeat after me. And at the conclusion of that prayer, you will have that relationship. Let us pray. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe he died, but rose again on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. I believe that he is your son, and I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do me a favor. If you prayed that prayer, uh, I, I'm, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to embarrass you, but if you prayed that prayer, send me an email at pastorjohnfm at gmail.com. Pastorjohnfm at gmail.com. Let me know you prayed that prayer and I will get back with you. Amen. This is also the time in our service where we open the doors and invite anyone who wants to become a member of Crosswork to come now. And if we were in the sanctuary, this would be the time that you would be able to come down. That's one way you could do it. There's several ways of cross work. We kind of do stuff differently around here. But this would be the opportunity for you to become a member of this church. Now, because we're all virtual, guess what? You can still become a member of this church and not even live in Round Rock. You don't even have to live in the state of Texas or the United States. But let me suggest to you. That no matter who you are or no matter where you are, everyone needs to be a part of a church. You need to be under the preaching and teaching of God's word. You need to be among a body of believers that will pull and pray for you during hard times. Crosswork is one of those churches. So do me a favor. If you would like to join this church, uh, you can type in the comment section on Facebook. Somebody will reach out to you. I will reach, out, will reach out to you later as well. Or you can still send me an email at pastorjohnfm at gmail.com. When you do that, I will respond to you. And I'll extend the right hand of fellowship and welcome you to this church. I would be excited to be your pastor. And the members of Crosswork would be excited to have you part of our family. Amen? So why don't you come? Become a part of us. We love to have you. we've reached a part of our service where we worship the Lord through giving. This is where we give our tithe and our offering. And so in just a second, the minister of music is going to play something to put us in the giving mood. And this is where you would bring your tithe and offering. You can do it virtually uh, through Givelify. Open up your mobile phone or your, your device and you can give that way. 
or if you'd like to give the traditional way, uh, we would be happy for you to do that. We will be happy to receive it that way as well. Someone will be sure to take care of that and we will get that deposited where it needs to be. Amen. Amen. So in just a second, we're going to give you an opportunity. We are still in worship because we at Crosswork believe that worship uh, giving is a part of worship. And so as the minister of music plays something, we're going to give you an opportunity to give. Now let us bless, let's bless the tithe and the offering. God, we thank you for the privilege to worship you through giving. We thank you for those who gave but, but though, and those who wanted to give but did not have it. We ask now that you consecrate the tithe and the offering so that it may be used to enlarge your territory through cross work. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've had a wonderful time. I think you've learned something today. I know I did. Anytime you come to worship, you've got to bring your own fire. Now, listen, we will not have Zoom today. There will be no Zoom room. That is, when we do the benediction, you are free to do whatever it is you want to do. Go hang out under a tree. Go on a picnic. Turn on to somebody else's worship experience. That's fine. Just come back to see us next Sunday uh, as well. Amen. Whatever you need to do. But we are so thankful uh, to have you uh, worshiping with us. We also want to invite you to our Bible study on Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, there is, we do it via Zoom. We're doing a devotional, uh, When Life Changes. It's by Elizabeth Lang Thompson. You can find it in the YouVersion app of your Bible. We will be on day four this coming Thursday, but we would love to have you uh, with us. Amen. To the visitors who came to visit Crosswork, we are so happy to have you. We will be sure and reach out to you and let you know how happy and privileged we are uh, we're to have you worshiping with us. And to any new members, praise the Lord. I'm so happy for you and happy to have you. And I will reach out to you today to let you know that we are excited about you being with us. Amen. Amen. Then King David was told the Lord had blessed Obed has blessed Obed Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought, who brought up the ark of the Lord came with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. Bring your own fire, a commentary on worship. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever, and the church said, Amen. Have a blessed week. We'll see you Thursday. Thank you.